My name is Colin Neal, freestyle footballer and football specialist. I believe that football is more than just a game. Through its unique power and universal appeal, football can bring people together, transform lives and inspire entire communities. It creates powerful opportunities to break down barriers to social development, education and health awareness. Here we are in Turkey to make a difference to the lives of children through the Football for Hope programme. Here we are in a uh, orphanage, children's orphanage in an area called Rehanli, which is really close to the Syria border. Most of the kids who, uh, who come over do end up uh, being dropped off in this centre. Most of them um, have got one parent or no parents, it's all been affected by the war. Um, we're going to deliver a workshop session and we're going to put smiles on faces and hopefully uh, make a huge change. So we're going to do a bit in the classroom and we're also going to do a little bit also out on the pitch as well. Hopefully we're going to raise hopes, uh, put smiles on faces and, and make a huge difference in the time that we've got here. The current number of Syrian refugees in Turkey stands at 3 million. Unfortunately, 75% of those are women and children, and they're the ones most at risk. Children are unfortunately exploited by means of trafficking, working, and all forms of physical and mental abuse. Currently, I'm not too sure what to expect, but football has the power to break boundaries and can change lives. I'm hoping to have a positive response from it. However, I'm not too sure exactly how the children will take to it. I can hand on heart honestly say that I've never worked with a group as hard as this in my life. Um, I think some of the characteristics in the kids we're currently seeing is where some of them are fearless or some of them are quite aggressive and some of them are just, they're like wild children essentially and, and these inner feelings are coming out on the football pitch. Just a few minutes into the session and there you go, it's kicking off already. You can see all the kids just having pure aggression and just letting it all out. However, I've got something perfect to tackle this situation. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Right, who is he arguing with? Listen, your brothers. Listen, look at me, look at me. Salafi. Here, here. Your brothers and you're better than that. Well, that was interesting. Um, one clearly wanted to uh, fight at the start. The other one weren't really up for it. Um, but by that, obviously, we challenged it head on and through football. And letting them play on has obviously squashed the mood a little bit. You're seeing all these feelings come out and obviously a lot of them are only acting upon what they know. And unfortunately, all they know is violence. So it's sad, you know? Here we have young Mohammed. We've tried to ask him a few questions and ask him literally about some of his influences and some of his background and if he had any extended family members. Mohammed has lost everyone, his mum, his dad and his two older brothers. And unfortunately, so many more children have to go through this heartbreaking journey alone. This is 12 year old Hamza. You can see straight away from the offset that he resembles a street child. His appearance, the way he carries himself. This is a stark reality of children who literally come from war-torn zones and try and integrate into society. Uh, he said he wants to, uh, to, to go back to Syria and he pray Allah to let everything go right. The Football for Hope programme actually brings out characters and allows kids to express themselves and brings a lot of these emotions to surface. So we're hoping that we can develop and see more and more of his character come out as we go. One of the fastest growing charities, Human Appeal, operates in 25 countries globally across four continents. The long-term mission is to deliver sustainable development programs which promote self-sufficiency and the empowerment of communities to solve the Syrian refugee crisis in Turkey. This is the Al Huda School, supported by Human Appeal. The great thing about this place is that it provides a safe place for children to play and get great education. If it wasn't for places like this, a lot of these children would be working on the streets. I'm not sure they would get an education at all.
I mean, if you if you look at the stark contrast between the session I had yesterday, which was, in my opinion, probably one of the worst sessions I've ever had in 15 years. And now you look at them, we've had a great session. Um, we've had uh, an excellent masterclass that we did earlier. We had good questions, good feedback. And we're actually inspiring them. We're actually sort of building confidence and giving them hope. And you can see that the session does work. We just need to be patient, we need to give it time. But also we're, we're helping these kids find stability and recover from, obviously, the trauma of war. So here we have young Hamza. It's great to see a massive transformation in his character. Straight away you can see him smiling, playing with his friends, and more importantly, being a young man, exactly what he should be doing. You can see how he's developed how to pass, work in a team environment, and also show some leadership qualities as well. These are all the things that children should be doing. They should have a safe environment where everyone has the right to play. To be honest, when I first met a lot of these young lads, the difference between then and, and now is, is that they were more drawn back. They were more, what's the best way of putting it, feral, I would say. Now that you can see that they feel like team players, they feel like they're discussing how their, their, their football went, and they're also, they're also a little bit more calmer in their, in, in their nature. I mean, most of these kids have, have, have a lot of trauma that they were dealing with. You know, just mental issues, you know, that they were, uh, they were harboring. I think that the fact that they've been able to get out on the pitch and raise their, sort of, their heart rates and, and, and get a bit of a sweat on has, 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 has really allowed these kids to, to kind of come out of their shell in a big, big way. So far, my journey has taken me all across the world. I've seen the high highs and the low lows. However, I've never really faced a challenge like this before in my life. Never has anything meant so much to me as Football for Hope does. I set out with the mission of just trying to put smiles on faces, but now I see the bigger picture. They're in desperate need of role models, people to guide them, and someone to look up to and trust. My parents mean a hell of a lot to me, and they've shown me so much love, care, and guidance throughout my life. I would hate to think if I was in that situation where I would have to fend for myself. I think we all can relate to the children in the sense that we all need somebody to love, to care, to turn to in times of hardship. I hope these children do keep in the programme and we can do everything that we possibly can in order to give them the Football for Hope programme and everything they possibly need. Please find it in your hearts to support these children and give them everything that they deserve. Things that we take for granted, the opportunity to play in a safe environment, a football, I'm a teacher. Hope that you can do your best to support these children and put smiles on their faces. So please donate now.